Ever wondered what happens when parties don't appear for a civil suit hearing? Well, that's where Order 9 of the Code of Civil Procedure 1908 or CPC comes into play. Today, we're going to take a closer look at this order and its significant role in the judicial process. Order 9 of the CPC, at its core, is all about the appearance of parties in a civil suit and the implications of their non-appearance. It's a critical set of rules that ensures the smooth functioning of civil proceedings, and it's mandatory for all parties involved in a civil suit to adhere to these rules. Think of it like this. You're invited to a party and your presence or lack thereof will have consequences. It's the same with a civil suit. Your presence, as either the plaintiff or defendant, is crucial. But what happens if you don't show up? Or if the summons isn't served properly? Or if neither party appears at all? That's where Order 9 steps in. The rules under this order are clear-cut and designed to maintain order in the court. They set out the consequences of non-appearance, such as dismissal of the suit, and also provide remedies, like the opportunity to bring a fresh suit, or restore a dismissed one. They also outline the procedures to be followed when only one party appears, or when a defendant shows up on an adjourned date. But why does all this matter? Well, the rules of Order 9 are not just about maintaining decorum in the court. They also protect the rights of the parties involved in a civil suit. They ensure that no one is denied justice due to a mere technicality or oversight. In a nutshell, Order 9 of the CPC is a vital tool in the judicial process that ensures fairness, maintains order, and upholds the principles of justice. It's not just about the appearance or non-appearance of parties, it's about the larger picture of ensuring justice is served. Now that you understand the general scope of Order 9, let's delve into its specific rules. Rule 2 of Order 9 states that if the summons has not been served, the court may dismiss the suit. Now you might wonder, what could cause a summons to go unserved? Well, it all comes down to the plaintiff. If they've failed to pay the necessary court fee or postal charges, or if they haven't presented copies of the plaint as required by Rule 9 of Order 7, the summons won't be served. Let's paint a picture to help you understand better. Imagine Jane Doe has filed a suit against John Doe. But Jane doesn't pay the court fee or fails to present the necessary copies of the plaint. In such a case, John never receives the summons. The court, seeing Jane's lack of compliance, has the power to dismiss the suit. So, if the plaintiff fails to do their part, they risk having their case dismissed. What if both parties decide not to show up? Rule 3 has the answer. Now, let's imagine a scenario where neither the plaintiff nor the defendant appears in court when the suit is called on for hearing. In such a case, the court may take the decision to dismiss the suit under Order 9 Rule 3 of the Code of Civil Procedure, 1908. Why? Because the court operates on the principle of fair hearing and justice. If neither party is present to put forth their case, it becomes virtually impossible for the court to deliver a fair judgment. So, let's take an example to make it clearer. Say, Mr. A files a suit against Mr. B. On the day of the hearing, neither Mr. A nor Mr. B turns up in court. In such a case, the court under Rule 3 has the authority to dismiss the suit. Just remember, if no one shows up, the suit might just be dismissed. If a suit is dismissed under Rule 2 or 3, does the plaintiff have any recourse? Rule 4 provides the answer. This rule allows the plaintiff to bring a fresh suit or apply for an order to set the dismissal aside. Let's consider a scenario. Suppose a plaintiff fails to pay the court fee, leading to the dismissal of the suit under Rule 2. In this case, the plaintiff can either start a new suit or request the court to reconsider the dismissal. If the court is satisfied that there was a legitimate cause for the initial failure, it has the power to set aside the dismissal and schedule a new date for proceeding with the suit. This provision ensures that the plaintiff is not unduly punished for a minor lapse or a genuine mistake. So even if a suit is dismissed, all hope is not lost for the plaintiff. Let's examine the rest of the rules under Order 9, which cover various other scenarios. First off, we have Rule 5, which is about the dismissal of a suit when the plaintiff fails to apply for a fresh summons. Now imagine this, a summons has been issued to the defendant, but it's returned unserved. The ball is now in the plaintiff's court. 
If the plaintiff fails to apply for a new summons within seven days from the date of the return made to the court, then the court may dismiss the suit as against such defendant. This rule emphasizes the importance of active participation and due diligence on the part of the plaintiff. Moving on to Rule 6, which is the procedure when only the plaintiff appears. This rule comes into play when the plaintiff is present and the defendant is not when the suit is called on for hearing. If it's proven that the summons was duly served, the court may proceed ex parte. Essentially the court can make a decision in the absence of the defendant, based on the evidence and arguments presented by the plaintiff. This rule underscores the gravity of ignoring a summons. If a defendant chooses not to appear, they run the risk of a judgment being passed without their input. Lastly, we have Rule 7, detailing the procedure when the defendant appears on the day of the adjourned hearing. In this case, if the defendant shows up and gives a good reason for their previous non-appearance, they may, upon such terms as the court directs as to costs or otherwise, be heard in answer to the suit as if they had appeared on the initial day fixed for their appearance. It's a sort of second chance, but it's not a free pass. The court will decide the terms, which could include costs or other conditions. It's a rule that balances fairness with accountability. Now that we've covered all the rules under Order 9, let's summarize what we've learned. We started with Rule 2, which deals with the dismissal of a suit where a summons has not been served. The court has the authority to dismiss the suit if the plaintiff fails to meet certain obligations, like paying the court fee, postal charges, or presenting copies of the plaint as required. We then moved on to Rule 3, where if neither party appears when the suit is called for hearing, the court may dismiss the suit. This rule underscores the importance of presence at the hearing for both parties. Next, we discussed Rule 4, which gives the plaintiff the option to bring a fresh suit or apply for an order to set the dismissal aside if the suit was dismissed under Rule 2 or Rule 3. The court has the discretion to set aside the dismissal and proceed with the suit if it finds there was sufficient cause for the failure or non-appearance. Rule 5 to 7 further elaborate on the consequences of non-appearance and the procedures when only one party appears. Rule 5 states that if a summons has been issued and returned unserved, and the plaintiff fails to apply for a fresh summons within seven days, the court may dismiss the suit. Rule 6 allows the court to proceed ex parte if the plaintiff appears and the defendant does not, given that the summons was duly served. Rule 7 allows the defendant to be heard in answer to the suit if he appears on the day of the adjourned hearing and assigns good cause for his previous non-appearance. These rules, as we've seen, play a critical role in maintaining the integrity of the judicial process. They ensure that both parties are given a fair chance to present their case and protect against potential abuses of the system. Remember, these rules are mandatory and failing to adhere to them can have serious consequences. So, whether you're a law student, a practicing attorney, or just a curious mind, understanding Order 9 of the CPC is crucial.